Uh, let me ask you something. Did you guys watch the debate on CNBC last night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> now, uh, I did watch it, and in some ways it was impressive. It managed to thread the needle between um, confusing and boring. <laughs> but if I'm going to talk about the debate, it's now or never, though never is a tempting option. <laughs> okay, and I blame the moderators, because it started on the very first question. This first is an open question. This series of debates is essentially a job interview with the American people. And in any job interview, you know this, you get asked, what's your biggest weakness? So in 30 seconds, what is your biggest weakness and what are you doing to address it? Yes, they open with the one question that no one in human history has ever answered honestly. <laughs> in, in fact, when I, when I interviewed, when I interviewed for this job, I said my biggest weakness was sometimes I work so hard I forget to cash my paychecks. <laughs> but, but of all the non-answers the candidates then gave, Ted Cruz's was the most least. If you want someone to grab a beer with, I may not be that guy. But if you want someone to drive you home, <clears throat> I will get the job done. That's a great appeal to the voters. Ted Cruz, 2016, get in the car. <laughs> and after the first question, CNBC showed us how to conduct a debate unburdened by a shred of respect. Senator Rubio, you're skipping more votes than any senator to run for president. Governor Bush, the fact that you're at the fifth lectern tonight shows how far your stock has fallen in this race, Mr. Trump. Is this a comic book version of a presidential no, campaign? Ms. Fiorina, your board fired you. I, I just wondered why you think we should hire you now. Wow. That, that is the most disrespectful question since the Lincoln-Douglas debate started with, Mr. Lincoln, douchebag says what? And what the moderators lacked in courtesy, they made up for in lack of preparation. Mr. Trump, let's stay on this issue of immigration. Um, you have been very critical of Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, who has wanted to increase the number of these H-1B. I was not at all critical of him. I have not been at all critical of him. Where did I read this and come up with this that you were? Probably, I don't know. You, you people write this stuff. I don't know where you. <laughs> To be fair, that was just journalism 101. Who, when, where, why, and what the hell am I talking about? <laughs> but I got to hand it to the Republicans. They stood their ground and they put up a fight. The questions that have been asked so far in this debate illustrate why the American people don't trust the media. Donald Trump, are you a comic book villain? Ben Carson, can you do math? Such a nasty question. <laughs> it's not a very nicely asked question the way you say that. John? John, do you want me to answer? You want to answer. Because I got to tell you the truth, even in New Jersey, what you're doing is called rude. Yeah. 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 Listen to the governor of New Jersey. He knows the people in his home state act like animals. Closing statements in Newark get chopped up and dumped in the Meadowlands. So there you have it. Much like the campaign season itself, last night felt like an unending slog. And believe it or not, it could have been even unendinger if it wasn't for the heroic action taken by the knight in shining bronzer. <laughs> Jim? These folks, CNBC, they had it down at three, three and a half hours. I went out and said, it's ridiculous. Nobody, I could stand up here all night. Nobody wants to watch three and a half or three hours. We called in, we said, that's it, we're not doing it. And at about two minutes, I renegotiated it down to two hours so we can get the hell out of here. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. Woo! 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 Trump 2016!
Donald, you saved us from another hour and a half of that debate. You truly are a great leader, and you have earned my vote. As long as you can negotiate your presidency down from four years to, you know, two hours feels about right. But it's no surprise things didn't go that smoothly, because even before the debate started, the campaigns were complaining to the Republican National Committee about their green rooms. Marco Rubio's green room had a movie theater in it. Donald Trump's green room had some uh, couches and flat screen TVs. On the left is Carly Fiorina's green room. It has a jacuzzi in it. On the right is Rand Paul's green room that looks like a jail cell. Rand Paul and Chris Christie are basically getting a closet with a toilet in it. I toilet in a closet. Well, maybe it wasn't an insult. For instance, the RNC might have just wanted Chris Christie to be closer to where his campaign has gone. <laughs> and and I understand the candidates were upset, but as someone who has a lot of guests on his show, I know sometimes it's hard to find equal space. Usually, your first guest gets the, the nicest room closest to the stage over here. Sometimes you need to reserve your biggest room for the band. And sometimes guests like authors, who are great, end up in our more humble accommodations. For instance, last night we had National Book Award winner Jonathan Franzen, and he's great. When I stopped by to say hi to him before our show, I found out he'd been put in one of our smaller dressing rooms. Hey, Megan. Hey. Hey, what dressing room is Jonathan Franzen in? Um, that would be 11. Oh, great. <laughs> Mr. Franzen, we're almost ready for you. Thank you. Be right out. Great. Hey, did you get the flowers that I sent you? Uh, no, I didn't see them. They should be over by the makeup mirror. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Um, I'll be right out. Just finishing a cigarette here. OK, I'll see you on stage. Though, uh, actually, Jonathan, you really shouldn't be smoking in there. Jesus, I set the curtains on fire. Help! Oh my God! Jonathan, are you okay? Je I'll be right back! Help me! Help me! Help! Hello, help! Jonathan! Back away from the door! Get in the corner of your dressing room! I'm gonna try to chop you out! That was a close one. That was a. Whew, shoot! That was a close one, but Mr. Franzen is fine. We got him out of his dressing room and were able to rush him over to our hospital. 